This review is brought to you by DwayneWright.com, FileMaker Framework Solutions, virtual one-on-one FileMaker training, consulting, and custom design services. For more information, please visit www.DwayneWright.com. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne, and I want to do a quick movie on a script trigger change that I did for the work in progress version of uh, In Business, the next coming up one. I kind of rambled a little bit. I thought I had a 2.9 ready. I thought I had a 3.0 ready when FileMaker 10 came out. I kind of shuttled all those things, and now I'm starting working on a totally different UI. And... Um, integrating those FileMaker 10 features. So the next version of InBusiness will be FileMaker 10 only. And so what I wanted to do is, I haven't seen a nice selection of quick, easy script triggers um, in ways that you could use them. So uh, it's perhaps I just haven't stumbled across them, but I'm going to go ahead and build a collection myself. This is one of them. So what we're looking at here is a staff record, okay? And this is, you know, a pseudo dashboard, if you will, so that a staff member can see, you know, how they're related to uh, other modules. And one of these uh, is a time card. Let me go over here. And so here you can see a time card record that is filtered by a range of dates, a start date and an end date. And you can manually change the dates here. And then what we did over here, and this is in the previous version, is had a set of buttons that would say, okay, well, let me just see today. And what it did was it just set the start date and end date to today and yesterday, which, you know, would subtract a day from that. And then this week, which actually would take a look at when the Sunday was for the current week and set that as the start date. And then when is the Saturday of the current week and set it, you know, the end date to that. And last week, pretty much the same thing, only we're going back a week. And then this month, again, it would set it to the day one of this month as the start date. And the last day of the month as the end date. And then last month would just do the same thing, but for last month. And then year to date would set it to day one of the current year to the current date. You would see all those, those items. So... Uh, that worked pretty good. Let's go ahead and pull up our script debugger and pop it up over here. Let's see. Actually, apologize for that. And make it a little bit smaller now. Let's bring it on over. And as we set like today, we can see that basically it is a sequential. Uh, if statement, so you have a set of ifs that all work sequentially instead of nested within each other. And I just kind of do that mostly so everything's indented properly. And what you do have is every button has got a script parameter attached to it. And then that's how the script itself branches. So the parameter, the parameter is today, which is the button we clicked. Then it goes ahead and sets that logic. And again, if that's not the case, then it goes down the list, looking at the right parameter and then performing the right action. You could condense this up quite a bit if you wanted to write the branch in the set field itself. So you could write down if the parameter is this, branch it down like that. And the only bad part about that is that then again you gotta it's a lot harder to tweak. You have to go in and branch and and I do tweak these quite a bit. It's easier to tweak a script and instead of open up a big calculation that's extremely long and then tweak it between there and test and that type of thing. Plus, it's easier to disable script steps than it is to disable calculation areas. Uh, it's also easier visually to see a script step that's disabled by looking at the script than to look at an entire calculation and see row by row which ones might be deactivated and which ones are not. So that's kind of my logic for doing that. Plus with scripts that can be put into folders, now you have a whole other layer of organization where you can put you know, scripts that are deactivated or reactivated, test scripts, that type of thing. So kind of you know makes it easier that way. So that's just a variation of it. Now, back to the regular topic, let's talk about the script trigger opportunities. So let's just 
go ahead and knock that down. Well, let's just go ahead and put it in like this week. And again, you know, if we see how it passes over the entire sequential if, and it just goes down. And you can see that there's some that will come up and say, well, I guess we won't see them. There are some in this same script that are next week. And that doesn't make sense in a time card standpoint, but I use the same script when I want to see future events or activities. So we'll knock that down. Okay, so there we go. Um, now let's go ahead and close our debugger right now. And this is the old way of doing it. A very minor tweak, but boy, I think you can tell a good difference in the user interface and the interactions and the number of stuff on the screen is if we pop on down to this version. And now we don't have any of those buttons and we don't have to set any script triggers. We just have a range filter. So from here, and a matter of fact, I think I ought to, since I'm on the same record, I'm going to go ahead and just close this window so that FileMaker doesn't can get confused and think, you know, I'm modifying the same record in two different windows. So then here I can just choose my actions. You know, quite a bit easier. And so really, you know, this change, all you had to do is to create a global field to contain, you know, the value list and create the value list that goes along with it. And let's turn on our debugger again. Move it over. And choose another day. And now you can see, and I don't even think this is necessary, I just like setting it into a variable. I'm setting a variable equal to what my active field contents were. So I clicked that field and I made a change. And it grabs that variable. And then instead of, you know, wanting to use a script parameter as the branch of the script, I just get the contents of that variable. Now, I believe you could just have, you know, get active field contents in here as well. But again, I, I like to have, my, my scripts may not always be the tightest. They might have opportunities where you could condense the script down a lot. I tend to ignore those opportunities unless there's a big return on investment for it because, again, I copy and paste scripts all the time, script steps, that type of thing. And having a few extra script steps that I can easily take out is preferable to me than having to open up raw code and look line by line at code and try to decide what I want to do. Then, basically the trigger just works exactly as the other one did. It just, you know... Everything works the same. The trigger itself, let's go into layout mode, go to time card, hold down the command key as we double click. So we're just using the on object enter. So when I object enter, it goes ahead and fires the script. Basically when I let up on the mouse button because I have a, a menu chose on there. I tried some of the other options and they tend to fire all the time. So the on object enter was the best choice for this. So that's really it. One quick way to just go ahead and see your script triggers replacing what had previously been a bank of buttons. Do you have questions or comments about the video you just saw? Please feel free to email me at info at Thank you.